Hey friends and welcome to my show, and before we get started today, I want to warn you that this video is going to contain some mid-level neurobiology stuff, and even though you should be able to grasp it, in the interests of accessibility, I'll be using on-screen annotations to highlight and explain key points. But why am I talking about neurobiology in the first place? Well, a couple of people have asked me to talk about ADHD, and I absolutely love that idea. But if I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it properly. I'm going to start with the basics and work my way up from there. Hopefully at the end of this, we'll have a series of videos that can help people with ADHD function in a world that seems built to frustrate them, and help non-ADHD people make things a bit more accessible for us. Although ADHD still isn't fully understood, we are finally beginning to reach a consensus on what's going on, and surprise surprise, like other mental illnesses including depression and bipolar disorder, it all comes down to brain chemistry. Specifically, differences or dysregulations in the function of three areas of the prefrontal cortex, the bits of your brain that sit right up the front. We're talking about the dorsolateral prefrontal cortex, the right inferior prefrontal cortex, and the ventromedial prefrontal cortex. The dorsolateral prefrontal cortex is used to regulate attention. People with dysregulations of this area of the brain are seen to be inattentive and easily distracted. This is the symptom most people think of when it comes to ADHD. You might find yourself staring out a window, watching two dogs fighting over a hot dog instead of paying attention in class. You catch yourself halfway through a conversation, realising that you have absolutely no idea what anybody has said for the past few minutes, and it looks like you just agreed to something, but you don't know what it is. There's been at least one incident where you almost got hit by a tram, because you were on physical autopilot and your conscious mind was off contemplating the purchase of lockpicks and you forgot that vehicles happen on the road. People think you're ignorant, or stupid, or that you don't care about them, or other hurtful things, and you just wish they understood that the part of you designed to focus simply doesn't work like theirs does. Now onto the right inferior prefrontal cortex, which is the part of the brain that regulates behaviours and inhibitions. It stops you from acting impulsively or rashly, helps you remain settled and calm, and tries to stop you doing risky things. But because this area underperforms in people with ADHD, we exhibit symptoms like strong impulsive behaviour, that is, doing things without thinking them through, and hyperactivity. This can look like so many things. You're on the couch trying to watch TV, but you just keep shifting postures and positions every few minutes. And it's not that you're uncomfortable, but you just need to move. You walk past a music shop and they've got a sale on brass instruments and heck, you've never played the tuba before but you absolutely need to own one, right now, immediately. You're having a conversation and you've got a thought, and if you don't say it then, you might just explode so you interrupt the conversation, only the thing you really needed to say was actually an overshare and you can feel the words leaving your mouth but you can't pull them back in and you super wish you hadn't started sharing something so intimate. People think you're naughty when you're a child, and undisciplined. When you're an adult, they call you rude, impatient, distracting, and irresponsible. When you're an adult, you agree to do a lot of things, some of them very personal and private, that you will come to later regret. Thirdly, we've got the ventromedial prefrontal cortex, the part of the brain that regulates emotional responses and decision making, and that also picks up on irony, sarcasm, and deception. Dysregulation here causes a wide range of problems, but most commonly you see emotional outputs that are disproportionately larger than the event that caused them warrants. You find that trivial things like a store telling you they have an item only for them to not actually have it in stock becomes the basis for emotional devastation and huge meltdowns. You let yourself become increasingly excited about things, and the excitement builds and builds, and builds, and oh no, you've become too excited and now you're going to have an anxiety attack because it's all got a bit too much. You experience the smallest of letdowns and sink into the quagmire of a depressive funk. Of all of the symptoms of ADHD, this is often the most dangerous and the most damaging to relationships and reputations. And last of all, the dysfunctions in these three key areas of the prefrontal cortex are paired with an observed undersupply of two neurotransmitters, chemicals that communicate information throughout the brain and body, telling it what to do and when. 
First, there's norepinephrine, which lets the brain strengthen connections in its internal networks and allows signals to fire continuously for extended periods of time. Norepinephrine lets you concentrate and stops you being distracted, and it's also intrinsically linked with another neurotransmitter called dopamine, which is something that the brains of people with ADHD have significant difficulty metabolizing or processing. Dopamine does a couple of things, but it's one of the brain's reward mechanism chemicals used in encouraging positive behaviours to become habits and discouraging negative behaviours as much as possible. So you can understand why people with ADHD don't ever seem to learn lessons from doing stuff. Our brains don't reward us for brushing our teeth or studying before a test. Dopamine also helps the brain in decreasing noise, that is, any input that isn't relevant to what the brain considers important at the time. So the dripping tap, the ticking clock, the sniffing of a coworker, the constant vibration of a phone, the dozens of conversations going on around you at any point in time, they're all the same volume, the same maddening volume. No wonder we can't pay attention to just one thing. So that's what's going on in the brain of someone with ADHD. We're not lazy, we're not thick or dumb or whatever people call us. We're not obnoxious, we're not naughty, we're not under applying ourselves or any of that type of stuff. Our brains are just wired differently. We don't make as much of some brain chemicals as other people and we don't use them as efficiently either. And that's okay, we're not broken. Other people just need to get used to the fact that this is how we function. This is how we happen and they can deal with it. I hope this video helped you understand the science behind ADHD. And if you've got any follow-up questions, don't be afraid to ask me here or on Twitter or wherever. I'll do my best to answer them. And if you think this video might help somebody who needs to understand ADHD, please show it to them. That would be awesome. Okay, I love you. Bye-bye.